Hello, Jesse Good here, and it's time for my yearly Cancel Lego Sets list video. This is part five, and if you haven't seen any of the other parts, well, you don't really need to since we have 10 fresh entries here, but do check those out if you have the time. Basically, I'll be taking a look at 10 entries of Lego sets or themes that never made it onto store shelves for one reason or another. Without further ado, let's get right into the list. Starting off the list is from artist and product designer Mike Colonese's art station page. There's a project entitled Lego Dino Racers. According to Mike, Lego was looking to take a break from city, space, and castle around 1998, and it seems like Mike was a freelance designer hired to think outside the Lego set box, and these designs really are out there. As in, I'm not sure how they translate into Lego sets. And seeing how 1998 was around the same time Bionicle was being developed, I'm sure this was a competing theme idea to capture that older audience. Meaning, I'd imagine the builds would probably lean more towards using Technic pieces. There was the Tyrannosaurus X, the F1 Parasaur, and Turbo Triceratops. Each had their own stats and key features highlighted, but I'm still curious how all of that would play into a toy. Dino Racers wasn't the only unreleased LEGO theme on Mike Colonese's art station. There's also a very similar theme entitled LEGO Hero Knights. There's an octopus, phoenix, dragon, and scorpion. Compared to Dino Racers, these are less land-based and a bit more air-based and sleek. Notice how some sketches have a character on top. I'm guessing those are the Hero Knights, and I wonder if those would have been minifigures. Perhaps the idea of having a castle action theme started here and led to the second Knight's Kingdom theme in 2005. LEGO Universe is a now defunct massive multiplayer online game which ran from 2010 to 2012. The game didn't bring in the money LEGO and developer NetDevil were looking for, causing it to shut down much earlier than hoped. Unsurprisingly, physical products based on the game were planned, but never released. One pitch was a minifigure series, this concept art was by LEGO Universe's senior concept artist. Another was the idea of a service to provide players the ability to purchase their in-game character as a physical figure, much like the service designed by me, active at the time. Darth Dragdog on Reddit even got his hands on one, being a community manager and these photos were shared by him to minifigure price guide, and the torso and legs here seem to have a weird texture to them. If only LEGO Universe had a larger player base, because this really was something special. The LEGO Ninjago movie Final Wave was relatively small, with a total of 5 sets released between November 2017 and January 2018, with one set, Ninjago City Docks, coming out later that summer. However, another big set was planned to release, 70630 Ice Monastery. While its name showed up on Eurobricks in April 2018, the set was supposed to be part of that final wave. I assume it was going to be based off of one of the scenes from the original plans for the movie, but I guess they abandoned it after the movie went under one of its many rewrites. Perhaps a Castle Forsaken set released in summer 2019 was what the Ice Monastery set became considering the Vermilion sets from Winter 2017 were apparently first thought up with an early draft of the LEGO Ninjago movie, but later were repurposed to fit the Hands of Time storyline in a TV show. LEGO Galador is by far one of the most underrated and amazing LEGO themes out there. I mean, LEGO really thought outside the box with this one, like seriously. Galador leaned more like an action figure than a buildable toy, made with a minimal amount of pieces compared to other themes in the LEGO system. And one of the biggest fans of Galador is Nick Voss, known as the Prince of Galador, who became a LEGO designer long after the Galador theme ended its one-year run in 2002. Nick has brought to life new info and pictures on cancelled Galador sets, first of which is Mokar, which was set number 8322 and would have retailed for around 20 bucks. This bike shark hybrid thing is described by Nick to be highly dexterous, possessing both mechanical arms and a powerful crab-like gripping claws, so we can even consider it to be part crustacean as well. Then there were two figures Nick revealed that would have been sold as part of a third Gallagher wave if the theme had been more successful. Europedes of Earth and Boge, an illusion created by Gorm, the main antagonist of Galador. Okay, look, I haven't ever seen the show, so I probably butchered a lot of the lore and names there, but hey, thank you, Nick, for showing off these cool cancelled sets. Mm -hmm. 
Many Ninjago waves seem to have gimmicks to them. 2019 had Spinjitsu Slam, 2018 had Dragon and Spinjitsu Masters, 2015 had Flyers, and you know the theme did color out with those Spinjitsu Spinners. Either way, with the Summer 2018 Dragon Masters, each ninja had a respective set, except Nia and Lloyd. Well, there was a Nia Dragon Master set plan, set 70649, which was listed to retailers early in the year, but never came out as a set. I can imagine this being particularly annoying to completionists, but then again, Lloyd and Nia never had a Dragon Master outfit, instead with the teen Sensei Wu getting a Dragon Master set under the Golden Ninja moniker. Apparently, in the TV show, Lloyd and Nia split off to their own journey, and have never used a form of Spinjitsu with dragons. The other Ninja and Wu were in a realm of where dragons roamed free, hence them getting Dragon Master sets. The outfits never even appeared in the show for any of the Ninja. I guess LEGO ended up cancelling the Nia one as it didn't contextually make sense. And no, I didn't start watching the Ninjago TV show. Thank you, Pen Plays, for the info. <laughs> A LEGO Architecture Las Vegas Skyline set was to release in January 2018, but never came out. Part of the set's build had a miniature Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. Tragic shooting happened at the Mandalay Bay Resort in the fall of 2017, so it seems like LEGO decided to cancel the planned January 2018 release of the set, feeling it may have been too soon as LEGO is careful to associate their brand with violence. A new LEGO Las Vegas Skyline set released later that year in the fall of 2018, which was set 21047. This new version replaced the Mandalay Bay build with the build for the Bulagio Hotel. However, some copies of the cancelled version ended up leaking into stores in parts of the world and have gone for quite a bit of money online. The LEGO DC Superhero Girl sets sold poorly when they released in 2017, and while Third Wave appeared in 2018 preliminary catalogs, it remained unreleased to this day. The wave was scheduled for January 2018 with three sets, the first being 41242 Batgirls Bat Cycle, which would include a small bike build, side street build, Ace the Bat Hound, and a red Kryptomite for around $15. Then there was set 41243 Supergirls Dorm, which was in line with the other room sets and also included Crypto and a green Kryptomite for about $20. Bucks. And then set 41244 Starfire High Flying Wonder Woman Rescue, which would have included our first Starfire mini doll, along with a jet for her, a small build to have a yellow Kryptomite capture Wonder Woman, and was priced around 25 bucks. I guess at that point, LEGO felt the risk with this theme, as all three of those sets are fairly cheap and only one new mini doll would appear, meaning this was a very small wave in general. The LEGO Star Wars buildable figures have had a rough run. The really popular villains sold well, but most of the releases struggled. And we discussed that in another list though, so go check that out if you're interested about LEGO sales. Relevant to this list, it's no surprise more buildable minifigures were planned but canned. The final wave of buildable figures released with the initial solo A Star Wars Story sets in April 2018. However, there was going to be a summer 2018 wave of two sets, one featuring a super battle droid, the other being a 501st clone trooper and ATRT. Yeah, the 501sts are popular enough to get a buildable figure, but not enough to get a battle pack apparently. The set would have also been the second of the buildable figures to have a buildable vehicle. And for our last entry on the list, in an interview found on the LEGO Ambassador Network with Jason Moreno, a LEGO Movie 2 set designer, pictures were shared of an Apocalypseburg Batmobile. Jason said the design went through many iterations and was even approved by Warner Bros. and the LEGO Group to appear in the LEGO Movie 2, but the design ended up being cut from the movie. The picture gives us a glimpse of some of those earlier designs for the Batmobile, with the final really making the inner Power Miners fan of me scream of sadness. I wish this appeared in the movie so that I could get my hands on this set, and all I could hope is that the set included the more detailed Batman from the Apocalypseburg set, and not that cheap one from the $20 set. But either way, this vehicle was cut for unknown reasons. And look, I'm speculating with many of the reasons why these sets didn't appear, but I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Special thanks to Jamester, Penn Plays, and LJ Johnson for helping me with some entries on this list, and a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. 
Pledging as little as $1 a month allows me to put out more long form content like these list videos. And thanks to all of you guys for just watching this video. Keeps the content coming. Subscribe to keep up to date with new videos on the channel and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.